Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the second part of my lip syncing video, I'm going to show you how to lip sync choosing mouths from the mouth chart rather than choosing the frames from the time offset modifier like I showed you in the last video. So this way you can visually lip sync from the mouth chart in the viewport, which should speed things up quite a bit. It's also a nicer workflow. If you find this type of information helpful, please like and subscribe so I can finally get monetized and buy my very own Ocelot. If you know, you know. So the first thing I want to do is show you what a driver actually does. So to do this, I want to start with the file I ended with in the last video. I'm going to hide my character by turning off this eyeball in the outliner. Then I want to go to object mode. So the first thing I want to do is add a sphere. So I hit shift A and go to mesh, UV sphere. And before I start doing anything else, I want to make sure auto keyframing is off. So I'm going to click that off down here. I'm going to hit G to grab it, move it over. Then when it's still selected, I want to click in the material properties. Click new. And in base color, I want to change this to blue so it's a little easier for you to see. I'm going to double click on the name and change it to driver. Now with the sphere still selected, I'm going to hit shift D to create a duplicate. I'm going to drag that over. And then I'm going to change its name to driven. And then in its material properties, I'm going to click this new button to create a new material. Then I'm going to click in the base color and change this to red. Now with the driven sphere selected, I'm going to go to the transform menu. And if you don't see that, you can hit N on your keyboard to open it. And I'm going to right click under the Z location and hit add driver. Now from this pop-up menu, I'm going to go down to where it says object, click on that and change that to driver. So the driver will be controlling this. So with driver selected, I'm then going to change type to Y rotation. So when I rotate the driver sphere, it will move the driven sphere up and down because under the transform for the driven sphere, I chose the Z location. So with that selected, if I just mouse away from that menu, it will go away. So if you try this and the menu disappears, that's why. And I'll show you a different method later to get back to that information. So now that I've set up the driver, if I click on the driver sphere and hit R to rotate it and Y to constrain it to the Y axis, you can see if I move it to the right, the sphere goes up. If I move it to the left, the sphere goes down. So that's how drivers work. The action of one object controls the action of another object. So let me delete these. So what I'm going to do is set up a driver that's going to change the mouth shape of the character each time I move it down to one of the mouths on the mouth chart. And then it will set a keyframe when I do that. So it'll be much quicker to animate this way than going back and forth to the time offset modifier and changing the frame number there. So click on the mouth chart and we'll hit G and X because I want to grab it and move it in the X axis over a little more to make room for my driver. And we'll pull it up just a little bit. So now I want to create my driver object. So I'm going to hit Shift A and under Mesh choose Cylinder. In the Transform Properties to the bottom left, I'm going to change the X rotation to 90 degrees. So now it's facing forward. And I could have chose a circle or something like that. You could actually make the driver anything. But I wanted a circle, but I wanted it already filled in with a polygon so that I can apply a material to it so it's easier to see. I want a middle mouse button and drag around my viewport so we can see it. I want to delete the back half of it. So to do that, I want to go to edit mode. You can see our vertices. I will left click and drag. So I've selected all of those. And one note, I'm looking at it from a view where I can see all the vertices. If you don't, it won't select them all. And you'd have to go to x-ray mode to see through the object to get all the vertices. But the way I've got it angled now, I can select them all at once. So I've selected them all. I do want to make one note before I delete these. You notice in the center of the mesh, there is a yellow or orange dot. This is the object's origin point. So actually, let me go out of this and go to object mode. So if I select this and I hit R, you can see it's rotating around that dot. So pay attention to where the dot is when I delete these vertices. So I'm going to back to edit mode. I'm going to select those again and hit delete. And then choose vertices. 
And you see the dot is still in the center of where the object was. And if I go back to object mode and I hit rotate, it's still rotating around that spot. So I don't want that. So I'm going to go up here to Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. You see it snapped to the middle of that. Now if I rotate it, it rotates around the middle of the circle, which is what I want. So I hit zero on my numpad to go back to camera view. And we'll turn back on my character object. Then I'm going to click on the cylinder. I'm going to double click on the name and change the name to Mouse Selector. Now we hit G to grab it and pull it over somewhat centered to the first section of my mouth chart. And I'll hit S to scale it down. Now with it selected, I want to go to its material properties, click new to create a new material. I'm going to click in the base color and I'm going to click this eyedropper tool and choose the blue from Batman's cowl. And now we have the same blue. Now while I've got this selected, Currently, I can move this in all directions, but I don't want that. I really just want to constrain it to being moved up and down. So with this transform menu open, and again, if you don't see those, you can hit N on your keyboard. I want to turn on all of these locks except the Z location lock. Now you can see if I select and hit G, it can only move up and down. I'm going to hit N to close that menu. Now, at the end of the last video, if I click on character and go to the modifiers panel, you can see we had set up the time offset modifier so that it controls the changes of the mouth shape. So if I change the frame here, it changes it in the viewport. So this is what's controlling our mouth. For me to be able to move the mouse selector up and down to choose the mouse, I'll need to have that driver connected to this frame setting. Since we lip synced this last time, I'm going to be replacing those keyframes this time. So I'm going to left click in the timeline and delete all the keyframes that are gold. So with those deleted and auto keyframing is still off, I'm going to go to my frames and change that to one. And now I'm going to right click on frame and choose add driver. Now I'm going to hover away from this to close that menu because I'll show you a different way to set this up. So with the driver created, I'm going to go down here to my timeline icon, click on it, and change it from timeline to driver's editor. Here to the left, we see the driver I just created, the frame offset driver. So when I click it, to the right are four menus that open up that we can use to adjust this driver. So I'm going to click on drivers, and this is similar to the menu we saw earlier that popped up. So I can select my object here, which I want to select mouse selector. And for the type, I want to select Z location because this is what we set it up to be. It's going to move up and down, which will then control the frames that are used. So now you can see that my driver is next to the closed mouth, which is mouth number one. But if I click on the character, you can see we're on frame three, which is not what I want. And I also want to make a note that I want to see these frames as I change them with the mouse selector. But the modifier panel only shows when the character object is selected. So if I select the dot and try to move it up and down, that panel goes away. So to fix that, with the character object selected, I'm going to go to the modifiers panel. I can see my time offset modifier. I'm going to click this thumbtack, and it turns white. That means this panel is locked to the view. So no matter what I select, it's still going to be showing. So now I can select my mouse selector, move it up and down, and I can see what frame I'm on. If I grab that and move it up and down, you can see the mouse changing, but I can't see the frame number changing in the modifier menu until I left click to stop the movement. See, now it changed to 1, now it changed to 2. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to hit G to grab it and move it back to the 1 spot. Okay, now again, I'm on the number 1 mouth, but the frame number is 3 and I need to be 1. So I'm going to select the character. And in the driver's editor, I'm going to click on driver tab. And where it says expression variable plus one, the variable is the frame offset. So currently it's set to three. So this is taking the frame offset and adding one to it. So what I want to do is change this to minus one. Now you can see the frame has changed to one, which is what I want. So if I click on the mouse selector and drag it down by hitting G to grab it, you can see the mouth disappears. 
and if I let go, you can see the frame turn to zero. So the driver is working in reverse. If I go down, it goes into the negative. If I go up, it goes in the positive direction. So that's the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to grab this and move it back up to one. With character selected, I'm going to go back to the driver's editor. In the third tab, I'm going to click on modifiers, add modifier, generator. So in this panel, I'm going to reverse the way this works. So under the third section, which is x to the power of 1, I'm going to change this from 1 to minus 1. Now you can see our mouth changed when I did that, because now if you look into the frame section, it shows that it's at minus 1 instead of 1. So to fix that, I'm going to go back to the character. I'm going to go to the Drivers tab. So we have it on minus 1. So I'm going to click in there and change it to 4. And now we're at 1 again. So if I left click on the mouse selector and hit G to grab it and pull it down, now you can see the mouths are moving in the right direction, but they're not lining up with the mouth chart. The interval between the movement is too great. So I'm going to click on the character object again. I'm going to go back to modifiers, and we're having it to minus one. This is how fast it's moving when I drag it down. So I'm actually going to change that to minus two, so that'll cut the speed in half. And once again, that changed my frame because those two interact with each other. So I'm going to go back to the character object, click on the drivers tab, and I'm going to change minus 4 to 2.8. And that gets us to 1 again. So now if I click on this and hit G and drag it down, you can see it's starting to work. Now if I go down to 10, you see I'm not quite there yet. 10 is just a little off. So I'm going to put it at 10, go back to the character object, go to modifiers, change this to 2.2. .2. Now you can see we're on the right mouth. So if I click G to grab it and pull it up, now you can see it's choosing the mouse like we want. So with the driver set up, I'm going to go back to the menu over here and change this back to the timeline. And now the movements of the mouth selector will be setting the keyframes. So I can go back to this time offset modifier and unclick this thumbtack to deselect it. And now my viewport's back the way it needs to be. So now I'm going to drag through my timeline. You can hear the audios there. Now I know from the last video I set that at 30. So I'm going to put this back at 30. And we'll turn on auto keyframing. Now to get the mouse selector to set this keyframe, I'm already on the mouth I want it to be. So I'm going to hit G to grab it, pull it down, and then pull it back up to 1. And you can see it set the keyframe. So now, with the driver set up, we can set our keyframes just by scrubbing up and down in front of this mouth chart. So to demonstrate this, with it set to 30, and I've already set my first frame, I'm going to go to 31. And I'll move the mouse selector to 3 for an A sound. You can see it set that keyframe. Then let's go to frame 32 and move the mouse selector to 7 for an L sound. And then we'll move to frame 35. And we'll move the mouse selector to 8 for an F sound. Then we'll move to frame 40. And we'll move the selector to 3 for an E sound. Then we'll move to frame 43. And I'm going to move the selector to 2 for the D sound. Then at frame 46, I'm going to move the mouse selector to 1 for a closed mouth. So before I play this back, see what it looks like. I want to select all these keyframes, right click on them, go to interpolation mode, and change this to constant. When I change this to constant, that means the mouse shape I've selected will be held at that keyframe until the next keyframe. So I'll play this back so we can see what it looks like. Alfred. Alfred. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to finish up the rest of the audio. I think you've pretty much seen how this will work. So I'll speed this up and then come back and show you the finished animation. So cue the corny music. And you've been listening to Gone Goofy by the 16 Wheelers, brought to you by Epidemic Sound, not a sponsor.
Okay, with that finished, and we'll play it back so you can see what that looks like. Alfred, have you seen the keys to the Batmobile? Alfred, have you seen the keys to the Batmobile? Okay, I think that looks good. Hopefully you found this information helpful. If you're doing a lot of lip syncing with a specific character, using this method should help speed things up quite a bit. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe to help grow the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Alfred, have you seen the keys to the Batmobile? Master Bruce, perhaps you left them at Mrs. Al Ghul's apartment.